Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, is an approach to protecting your login credentials that requires the presentation of two or more of the three independent authentication factors. A knowledge factor, something only the user knows, a possession factor, something only the user has, and an inheritance factor, something only the user is. The most popular form of multi-factor authentication is two-factor authentication, which is used by online services like Gmail and Steam. The three factors are pretty clearly defined. Knowledge factors include PIN codes, personal questions like your mother's maiden name, passwords, and swipe, tap, or knock patterns like those on smartphone lock screens. Possession factors are physical items like an identification card that you would swipe to access secure areas of a building or a USB drive with an encryption key on it that decrypts a protected folder on a computer. Though for the most part, possession factors are being eliminated and replaced by smartphone features and apps, making your smartphone your possession factor. Inheritance factors are also known as biometric identifiers. They're a relatively new form of authentication and include face recognition, fingerprint scans, voice prints, and the ever popular sci-fi friendly iris and retinal scans. Now there's no doubt that biometric authentication factors are super cool, and while they're quickly being pushed into the mainstream, they're also meeting a fair bit of resistance, and for good reason. One issue is that biometric information can be easily repeated once compromised, and a second is that many individuals object to having their biometric information tracked and stored in a database somewhere, which seems like a fairly valid concern given the amount of secure data that gets compromised on a daily basis, and that unlike a password, you can't run around changing your fingerprints or retinas. At least not yet. So that's what it is. But what is it for? Well, better security. Logging in by combining a knowledge factor like your password with a possession factor like a physical key or a code sent to your smartphone makes your account much more difficult to target for online attacks. Let's take Gmail's two-factor authentication as an example. Even if a wannabe account hijacker obtains your password with a keylogger or a security question exploit, Google will require the entry of a six-digit code that they send to you that must be entered within a couple minutes. Something that hijacker can't get without your smartphone. And on top of that, and we're continuing the Gmail example here, once someone tries to log in with the correct password, that notification will go straight to you and you'll immediately know that someone is trying to access your account without your permission. And also that it's probably time to reevaluate your extremely secure password of gay men is love, gay men is life. Now, there are a few reasons why people don't use multi-factor authentication. Some services don't support it. Some people share accounts with a couple or a business partner, so they can't both have the same smartphone at the same time to use it. And then some people just plain can't be arsed to add another step to their login process. But if you truly care about keeping your personal data private from prying eyes, aside from those with a warrant that is, then the message here is that it's worth the effort. If the service doesn't support it, maybe you should find one that does. If you share an email account with your significant other or business partner, just get your own email. They aren't exactly expensive. And if you simply don't care, well then I think you're underestimating what someone with access to your accounts can do to you. I've been keylogged before, and multi-factor authentication on one of my accounts was the only thing that kept me from losing other ones. Speaking of things that you should use multi-factor authentication on, your lynda.com account, because knowledge is the most valuable of all resources, and you need to protect it. Well, maybe I'm being a little bit melodramatic, but lynda.com is an amazing resource with thousands of great courses available in their library. You can learn Adobe programs, pick up some new photography skills, learn about web design, business, or music production, or essentially whatever you want to do online. Head over to lynda.com and check it out. Their courses are taught by industry experts and they add new ones every week. So no matter how much you may know already or learn from lynda.com, there's always something new to check out. And best of all, their service is very affordable with plans starting at only 25 bucks a month. Thanks lynda.com for sponsoring this episode. Thanks you guys for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment letting me know if you have suggestions for future fast as possible videos like this one. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to TechWiki for more videos just like this one.